Hello, and thank you for studying with me on this April the 27th, uh, 2021, as we study yet another parable from God's Word, from the lips of the Lord Jesus Christ. And today's parable comes from Luke chapter 18. Now, I've entitled it, Prayer Encouragement. It's a very straightforward um, parable, but it's, uh, again, you've got, sort of got to dig into it to understand it. So, Luke chapter 18, verse 1. Now, he was telling them a parable to show that at all times they ought to pray and not lose heart, saying there was in a certain city a judge who did not fear God and did not respect man. And there was a widow in that city, and she kept coming to him, saying, Give me legal protection from my opponent. And for a while he was unwilling. But after a word he said to himself, Even though I do not fear God nor respect man, Yet because this widow bothers me, I will give her legal protection, lest by continually coming she wear me out. And the Lord said, Hear what the unrighteous judge said. Now shall not God bring about justice for his elect, who cry to him day and night? And will he, will he delay long over them? I tell you that he will bring about justice for them speedily. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? Prayer encouragement. As we uh, finish the parables of Jesus, we come to a parable that teaches us about prayer. Um, and in this prayer, uh, today's message is intended to inspire and encourage us. Um, this message, this study, is not intended to make us feel bad about ourselves, about how little we pray, perhaps. Uh, Jed Clampett used to say that he felt lower than a snake's belly in a wagon rut. Well, um, this, this study is not intended to do that. Today's message and study is intended to inspire us. You know, when I think of people who pray, <coughs> I think of one of my favorites who's now a pilot for Alaskan Airlines. And um, uh, when he was a, a Lord, I met through his parents. And um, I can remember um, taking him to McDonald's, him and his two sisters, taking them to McDonald's when Laura and I, well, when they, when the children were like, uh, Matt was probably four years old. And before we ate our McDonald's, uh, I said, well, which of you children wants to pray? And Matt said, I want to pray. And I'll never forget, he said, uh, thank you, God, for the food. Thank you, God, for Tommy and Laura. Thank you, God, for my sisters, Rosie and Kristen. And thank you, God, for me. I love that. Thank you, God, for me. Um, and today, as we look at this passage of Scripture, this passage of Scripture is going to remind us about the importance of childlike faith in praying. And so, the first thing that Jesus seeks to do with this parable is to encourage us in our praying. Uh, verse 1, now he was telling them a parable to show at all times they ought to pray and not lose heart. This is an encouragement to pray. This is not a condemnation in prayer. You know, it's really easy for a sermon on prayer to leave us feeling guilty, like we don't pray enough like we don't pray at the right time, like we don't pray in the right way. Now, there was a pastor that I used to know in another county, and he would come to our pastor's conference. And he would always let us know when he when it was his time to, to preach in the pastor's conference, he would always let us know that the reason his church was growing was that he got up at 4 a.m. every morning and spent two hours in prayer and Bible study. Um, and... And um, um, now the rest of us prayed and studied just as much as he did, but we just didn't do it at 4 a.m. Uh, we also didn't sleep through pastor's conferences like he did, like he also did, uh, because he had been up at 4 a.m. Like any time I was speaking or another one of the pastors was speaking, he'd be asleep because he'd been up at 4 a.m. praying, and I'm thankful that he prayed. Uh, but he always seen, he always worked it in anytime he spoke to sort of make the rest of us feel like second class citizens because of his getting up to pray at 4 a.m. 
Do we all need to pray more? Probably. Would we all benefit from more prayer? Absolutely. Does God want us in a perpetual state of guilt and anxiety over prayer? I don't think so. Because I don't find Jesus or any other biblical writer placing people under guilt over prayer. I do find Jesus modeling a life of prayer for us. I do find Jesus encouraging us to pray. I do find Jesus informing us on how to pray. I do find Jesus cautioning us on ineffective ways to pray. But honestly, I don't find Jesus or any other New Testament writer putting time limits on prayer and saying, you're not godly if you don't pray at a certain time in a specific way for a specific length of time. In fact, Jesus actually cautioned us against the idea that God would hear us simply because we used many words. So are we to pray often? Absolutely. Is prayer a huge privilege? Absolutely. Is, power, is prayer a powerful opportunity? Absolutely. But does God intend for you to feel like the worst Christian on earth every time prayer is mentioned? Absolutely not. God wants us to view prayer as a privilege, as an opportunity to worship and fellowship with him, as a limitless source of spiritual power and peace in our lives. In this passage of scripture, Jesus is encouraging us to pray. But Jesus also is encouraging us to persevere in our prayers. Now, he was telling them a parable to show at all times they ought to pray and not lose heart. Jesus wants us to understand the value of continuing in prayer long after our feelings have left us. Jesus does not want us to give up. Years ago, one of my friends, who was a youth minister, ran in the Rocket City Marathon. He'd never run a marathon, uh, which is 26.2 miles. About the 18-mile mark, when he was absolutely worn out, church members and members of his youth group began to show up and run alongside him. Different people ran with him for the last eight miles. They ran and encouraged him. And because they ran with him, he did not give up and he finished the race. Jesus wants you to understand that when you are tempted to give up on prayer, when you are tempted to say, what good is prayer? Jesus uses this parable to remind us to not give up on prayer. The parable is the per persistent widow. So he was telling them to uh, a parable to show that at all times they ought to pray and not lose heart. In a certain city, there was a judge who did not fear God, did not respect man. There was a widow in that city, and she kept coming to him saying, Give me legal protection from my opponent. For a while he was unwilling, but afterward he said to himself, Even though I do not fear God nor respect man, yet because this widow bothers me, I will give her legal protection. Otherwise, by continually coming, she will wear me out. Take note of several things. First of all, since this was an issue with one judge... It, would pro it was probably a money matter, like a debt or a pledge or a portion of inheritance that was due her. Secondly, this judge has no internal motivation to help the widow. He doesn't fear God or man. Thirdly, the widow has no influence. She has no strings to pull. She's too poor to hire a lawyer. Um, but she needs help with her opponent uh, because they must be the opposite of her. They must be wealthy and influential. So the widow uses the one type of influence she has, and that is persistence. The widow literally annoys the judge who is not inclined to help her. She literally annoys him through her persistent requests into answering her. Now, Jesus is not saying that God is like the unjust judge. Jesus is saying that God is, um, is unlike the unjust judge, that he is not reluctant like the unjust judge, that he desires to respond quickly to the prayers of his people. So, uh, this parable does not teach us that God is reluctant 
to answer our prayers. This parable teaches us that God is not like that unjust judge that had to be annoyed into helping the, the widow. So the principle, the first principle is this. We need childlike faith because disillusionment is common in prayer. Do you know how many times that Jesus encouraged us to pray? Matthew 7, verse 7, Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock it and it will be open to you. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18, Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Ephesians 6, 18, With all prayer and petition, pray at all times in the Spirit. We have the Lord Jesus and the Apostle Paul and others, the, the example of David in the Psalms. We have command after command and example after example that call us to prayer. Um, but there are many Christians who have become disillusioned with prayer, so much so that they pray very little. There are Christians who have asked God for things for which he said no. Uh, and if you're listening today, and God has said no to something that you wanted, something that there was nothing wrong with, you, uh, you need to understand that Jesus himself received a no as well. In the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus asked if he could avoid the cross, and the answer he received was no. And one of the godliest things you will ever do is to return to prayer when God has told you no. So if you're one of those Christians, God's word to you today is pray. God's word to you is test me, try me. Don't be afraid to ask great things of me just because I told you no at some point. Jeremiah 33, 3, the prophet, God spoke to the prophet Jeremiah and said, call to me and I will answer you and I will tell you great and mighty things which you do not know. For some of us, the most important thing that could come out of this study would be that we would return to childlike faith that we once had. Uh, uh, some of you have heard me tell a story about a family that was related to this church. They didn't go to this church, but they were, were related to it. And the father left the family. And the mother became very ill. She actually became ill with breast cancer. And the grandmother who attended our church some told me that when all that happened, the, when the, the, the father had left, the mother had contracted breast cancer, the grandmother told me that when all that happened, the mother in the family became distraught. And one evening she was crying and just so worried about uh, would they be taken care of. And the eight-year-old granddaughter crawled into her mother's lap and simply hugged her and said, Mama, God's going to take care of us. And the Lord did. For some of us that are listening today, the greatest thing that could happen to our faith would be that we would return to childlike trust in God, that we would reject cynicism, that uh, we would just return to childlike faith where we just tell what tell God what's on our heart. That's the first principle. The second principle is this. We need persistence because discouragement in prayer is common. Uh, the Lord Jesus shared this parable because, to encourage people to pray and to not grow weary. Uh, that's the main point of this prayer, when we that we would persist in prayer even when we're discouraged. Um do you want to be a person of great spiritual power? Do you want to be a person mighty in prayer? Do you want to be someone that makes a great difference in the lives of others through your prayers? Then you've come to the right parable because this parable is about something that you've got to have if you are going to be mighty in prayer. You've got to be willing to keep on praying when you see absolutely no sign that your prayer is being answered. Uh, I do know this, that God answered, answers persistent praying. When I was about to go to Auburn for my senior year, a lady at Central Baptist Church in Decatur came to me and said, I know that you're going into ministry, and I'm presently reading a book on prayer, and I'm going to pray for you for the next 30 days every day. 
And over those next 30 days, here's, here are the things that happened. I found a job that I needed to have because I'd run out of money. I received a powerful confirmation that going to seminary was what I was supposed to do. Uh, I received a powerful confirmation of my call to the ministry. And in those next 30 days, Laura and I had the initial beginnings of our relationship. All, and I think I give credit to someone who was praying. And of course, I know my mother was praying for me and Brother Mike was praying for me and others were praying for me. But I give at least some of the credit to that lady who was praying for me every day. Persistence means that we continue to pray. Years ago, I read about a small church that had a glass urn in their auditorium. And every time God says yes to a prayer, a church member places a glass bead that's colored green in that urn. And since 2001, they've had over 4,000 beads placed in that urn. And I will guarantee you that many of those 4,000 answers to prayer did not come on the first prayer or the 10th prayer or maybe even the 50th prayer. Many of them may have come on the 100th time that somebody prayed. Um, today, I would encourage you to persist in prayer and above all, return to childlike faith. Just tell God what's on your heart and leave the results to him. God bless you. And thank you for studying with me today.